So, type Spectrum, leave a space, type in your contribution and name, then send it to 7197. Your views, our interviews on Spectrum, Radio 1 FM 90. Hello, a very warm welcome. This is Spectrum on Radio 1. I'm your host, Edmond Chizit. On Spectrum tonight, how can the Ugandan education system be reformed to deliver the cadres needed to realize the country's goals of employment creation and development? As Uganda continues to reflect on its 50 years of self-rule, the debate about how the country can overcome educational bottlenecks uh, and chart its new journey to prosperity continues to rage. The nature of the education system in Uganda has taken center stage in this particular debate. Many educationists have argued that Uganda needs to revive its education system and end the trend where educational institutions generate more job seekers than job creators. They say that higher institutions of learning must drop all non-productive courses and focus on those that can redirect the country towards the new objectives and sustainability, consistent wealth creation and prosperity. Others have suggested that in order to ensure that the Ugandan education system becomes more viable, reforms should start at the lower levels by critically looking at the syllabus to ensure that there is no wastage of time. Others are insisting that in order to ensure that challenges like unemployment, lack of skilled manpower are addressed, Uganda should consider investing more in technical education to facilitate the emergence of a middle class which uh, then will form a strong base for transformation. Now, considering the challenges Uganda faces today, what reforms need to be carried out to ensure that the education system can provide the answers? Beyond education, what other linkages need to be put in place to build viable institutions of learning, considering how the world is changing rapidly in terms of technology and research? This and more questions will form the base, uh, the base of our debate on Spectrum. Tonight, our guests, Professor Venatius Bariamira, proprietor and founder of the Uganda Technology and Management University, uh, also immediate from the Vice Chancellor of Makere University. You're most welcome, Professor Barrier. Thank you, and good evening, listeners. We also have Mr. Frederick from Westgen, National Coordinator of the Forum for Educational NGOs in Uganda, also a member of the Citizens Action for Quality Public Education. You're most welcome, Mr. Tumwesigen. Thank you very much, and good evening, listeners. Professor Barrier, what's the state of our education system in Uganda today? That's a broad question. You want to look at the primary education system, the secondary education system? Let's look at the whole of thrust from kindergarten to university. You know, uh, as a country, we have a system. We are producing graduates. We are producing people at lower levels. But we need to really to maybe look at what kind of people we need. You talked about using graduates. I don't know whether that's the term you use. It. Yes. Everybody is useful. It depends on the, the quantities and the quality of the graduates you are producing. And it's a useless graduate. So I say yes. Well, go. On. Yeah. So, if for example we look at uh, those who are leaving a six or senior four, are they useful? Do they have skills? Many of them can read and write, but they cannot actually have like some of the skills that they can use, maybe to work for somebody or employ themselves. When it comes to the vocational institutions you're talking about, uh, in those institutions, the one thing we need to focus on are the teachers. Where are the institutions that are training teachers who teach in the vocational institutions? You, you need to make sure that those people are there. You need to look at the issue of the teaching materials of the laboratories. And if you visit most of these institutions, the laboratory facilities are not that good. When it comes to the universities, which we call the institutions that are producing job seekers, in some disciplines, they don't have teaching materials. They don't have the right laboratories. Now, if you are looking at a graduate, you have to focus on two things. You have to first of all forget about the buildings. You focus on the human resource and also the facilities, the laboratories, the teaching materials. If you don't have that, then you can't produce a quality graduate. And you cannot uh, address issues of unemployment because people need the skills. I will tell you this. When I was studying in primary, I went to a rural school. I only passed, not because that school had nice buildings, but it had very good teachers. When I went to secondary, we had very good teachers, but no chemicals. The chemicals we used for the exams came in towards the time of exams, and that's what we used and we passed. So once you have the right teachers, and maybe if you have the teaching materials or facilities, then you can actually produce the right to graduates. But if you don't have the teachers, you don't have good laboratories, then even if the curriculum is good, <laughs> you will not produce good graduates. The other thing, maybe we need to look at the curriculum. And for you to deliver that curriculum, it's a good curriculum, uh, then you must have the inputs in the curriculum. Good students, 
good teaching materials and then good lecturers. So some people say some of the Kashem we have is very old, is outdated, we need to look into it. So all these are issues for discussion. And what's your view? Is that, is that something that's old already? We need to work My view is that uh, we need to start from planning for the human resource. We need to decide on how many engineers we want, how many technicians we want, how many doctors, nurses, how many teachers at different levels, how many accountants. So once you know the number of people you need and how many you are lacking, then you also have to decide on the quality. And then you look at what is it we have to do to produce people of this quality. And then you, you, do, you go into inputs and so on. So, and that planning is lacking. You'll probably need someone from California to come and do that for you here. Not really. I think it is about strengthening the institutions as opposed to do that. We have a national planning authority, but I think Edith has not been empowered. Or, <laughs> or it is not able to do the work it's supposed to do. Because you rarely get any of this information anywhere. Okay, the only thing we see around is the, the national development plan, vision 2020, now we have 20, 2040. Now we have 2040. These documents are coming up. But you know, you need to follow up with these documents with action. Mr. Frederick, to, to my, what's your own assessment? How do you rate uh, Uganda's education system across the board? Well, thank you very much. Uh, and I'm glad uh, Professor Bali has uh, touched on it quite uh, substantially. And uh, we have been up and running since this year began on quality education. However much uh, we can talk about uh, syllabus, uh, people have talked about um, this, this is um, colonial education and so on and so forth. And all that is reductionism. If you have people going to school, whatever level, and are not learning, that's what Professor uh, Balia says, uh, quality education, inputs lacking, no scholastic materials, no laboratories, no this, no the other. You can design the best courses, you can call them the names you want, you can uh, turn them upside down, sideways up, and so on and so forth. But if people are not learning, they are not learning. They will not get skills. I have heard so many people even uh, blame the, the course say, you know, when you go to Makere University or University, you become a job seeker because they're teaching you an irrelevant course. There is no irrelevant course. It is not there. If it is ever there, then who designs an irrelevant course and why is it irrelevant? And uh, certainly, when you look at the courses, they say irrelevant. Actually, they are not. This world has the best brains from those courses. I have seen many people who go for bachelors in history and literature in Europe, not in Uganda, and they are computer programmers. I'm like, hey, how come? And they're doing all sorts of things under the sun. But also the other thing we need to look at, yes. and I, like, um, I agree with him, is if you look at the education system, the people that get to these higher levels, they all come from the primary education system. Yes. Now, when you look at our current primary education system, it leaves a lot to be desired. You look at the private schools, look at the government schools. The government has done a lot, by the way. Yes. has invested a lot of money. But most of this money is going into buildings. And when you look at what is core in the primary sector, it is the teachers and the teaching materials. Yes. And you find that most of these are lacking. You don't have so many quality teachers or qualified teachers. And you remember there are some, uh, well, we used to call them grade three teacher training institutions. Yes. Some of them were closed. And I think some grade five teacher training institutions were closed. And I remember in the early 70s and the, and the late, the early, early in the 70s and early 80s, yes. the best students out of senior four or senior six would go to these teaching institutions. It's not the case anymore. I'm not, not the case for them. anymore, actually, today. The best uh, people the best in the past would go to they would go there. They would go for teacher teachers. training. Yes. They would go to the training teachers. Then these are the people who would train people in the primary schools. And by the time you leave primary school, you'll be like as good as somebody joining the university. I look at the level of the people who come into university today. The way they think, the way they analyze issues, it is really you no know, lacking. So you should not blame the universities. You should not blame the teacher training, I mean the technical schools and so on. It's the product they are getting in that input. We need to address the issue of the primary education system in this country. Listeners, this is Patrick Murray John tonight. How can the Uganda education system be reformed to deliver the cutters needed to realize the country's goals of employment creation and development?
our guest tonight, Professor Venatius Bariam Rema. This man was vice chancellor at Makere University. He left and set up a university and called it Wotamu. Wotamu in Swahili means sweetness. Our, own, our second guest is Mr. Frederick Mwesije, national. He talked to us about that sweetness university. Mr. Frederick Mwesije, national coordinator of the Forum for Educational NGOs in Uganda, also a member of the Citizens Action for Quality Public Education. Professor Bariam, talk to us about some of these other, let's deepen until you get some of these other structural bottlenecks. Why these, did the best students stop going, the best people stop going to teacher training colleges? Why did it go wrong? Yes. What, what went wrong? Yes. One of the things is respect for the profession. You know, people have to say it is okay for you to become a teacher. Like it is something people should admire and want to be. That's why today, even if lawyers have no job, some of them, people still want to do law yeah. because they feel it's a course they must do. Medicine, they are not being paid a lot of money in terms of salaries, but people want to do medicine because they feel it's a noble profession. So it's about raising the profile of the profession. But the other element is that these people who used to go to, I mean, to these teacher training colleges, at that time, they would be able to take their children to the best schools. Today you can't. And the other problem that came up is this issue of allowing people to lose any number of kids that you want. If you are paying a teacher 200,000, you should never allow that teacher to have more than two children. Because the moment this person has five or six or they seven, can't afford it. they can't afford it. And then they, they become disgruntled. They say, I can't feed these people. Uh, I can't take my children to good schools. By the time they reach the classroom, they really have their own problems. They cannot concentrate. And you see, you can never allow that to happen. And you see, again, when you already have a differentiation in the system, when you have good schools, best schools, and bad schools. Well, that has always been the case, hasn't it? Absolutely, that has always been the case, and it should never have been the case. There are countries in this world where no matter which corner of that country you are, which town you are, it is the same education standard. It's the school is the same, the teachers look the same, they teach the same, in the same way, at the same pace, in the same measure. You have no difference between a school X and a school Y. You see, the other element is the motivation. If you look at the teacher today and say, I'm earning 250000 you find a driver. Most of these authorities are taking some time to look at what they pay. You find a driver, a cleaner, earning. 800, 1.2, a million, plus. 4 million shillings, other than earning 9 million shillings, just drivers. drivers. Yes, so it motivates these people. So it's not about money. If the money is little, it will be equitably distributed. And I would never expect to find a driver anywhere earning better than maybe a teacher in a secondary school. Because maybe in a primary school, you know, even for that <laughs> much. No, you may find a, a driver for a president. This guy must be security. <laughs> security. Yes, but you know, but you know. sincerely, there are some of these sectors where you find a driving an authority earning seven five million shillings with allowances on top of that you know this person is going to be driving the bus around the country so at the end of the month this person has about five million shillings in addition in the form of allowances yes so that is unacceptable these are things we must look into as a country and say look let us put the money where like uh, our heart is or where our priorities are and i think the primary education system has to be looked into the government has done so well in putting up buildings but I can assure you, in those old days, even in the days of the people like Socrates and so on, they never had a classroom they were studying under a tree. Yeah. And they did so well. So we like these classrooms because they protect students from rain and so on. But the most important thing that we need in primary schools yeah, are the so teachers that are well motivated teacher. and the teaching materials. All right. I mean, if I outline basically four things, if I can recap them. you got the teachers, you got the teaching materials, the curriculum, and then the buildings. You say we're doing not that badly on the buildings. So let's talk about the teachers. How should we deal with them? The training and the motivation. The teachers, you remember those days of Amin. Amin had a policy. <laughs> I was young then, and everybody who passed over at Erebo, you'd go to, I think, to come to Makere and you do education. You do education. You didn't have a choice. And people need education. There are professors who recently retired at Makere University, uh, and they were in science. These are people who got triple A's. In those days, they would just choose mathematics, they would choose chemistry, they would choose physics. That's what they would do because they loved it and they felt it was that good. So what we need is a policy reversal. And here, I think we need to encourage people to go to the teaching profession. 
the best people should go in there. People are reaching at Makena and other institutions. Uh, you know, like you, you refuse to do an education degree, but you know, you lecture without an education degree. So uh, that's the difference. Well, how do you do it? In the past, they used to say MDD was, uh, they looked, it was looked up down upon. Now it's probably a little bit it's different. Because people look at the artists and they think, you know, it's, it's oh, again what we prioritize in this country. If you look at an artist and say, wow, this person is like up there, everybody's admiring that person. Do MDD. Everybody wants to talk to that person. Then it is okay. <laughs> you know, but if you say, a teacher is this person that is so important. People want to go there, but I think now we can't just take them. We can't take care of people people there without money. We need to look at the salary package. How should we pay a teacher, primary school teacher? A primary school teacher. You see, it, it, we may not pay them so much, but let them feel that when they look at the comparative salaries, they are okay. If I'm being paid two hundred thousand, three hundred thousand. Then I should be able to say somebody again who is in my category is not earning much more than I'm earning. That's what, that will give them some bit of satisfaction. And then you say we are going to work towards improving your salaries. But if you are telling me your salary is at three hundred thousand, then but there is no more money. We are saying if you, if you don't want this side, we shall suck you. This <laughs> another person. So go and think we are going to stay there and do other things. And that's what most teachers are doing. In other words, uh, Mr. Mozi, how much do you think a, a teacher should get? If a driver gets a million, I won't begrudge them. Let them get their one million. Shares. I think we should start, how much should we we should start from a principle other than starting from uh, a figure. A figure. But and that has figure. been the problem. Uh, uh, if you need a figure, yes. the government does not have all that money. So we need to look at the primary education system and decide on whether we want to provide everything for free. Parents could cost share so that the government puts more money on the salaries and then the parents are able to maybe contribute towards the fees in some of these schools. But when you say everybody should study for free and you don't have enough money to support everybody, yet we have a very young population which you are allowed to grow, then you have a problem at hand. So I'm saying the, the principle, the principle is that of equity. Yes. As Professor just elaborated here, if you have one person somewhere who in the eyes of the teacher is actually not better in terms of either education or even the job they are doing, is earning hundreds, I mean, tens of times higher if say somebody is taking five million home and this is a teacher who is taking just below half a million, that, that alone is psychologically defeating. So instead of starting with a, a, a figure, we say a teacher should take so much, so much, and so on and so forth. Still, let's assume, say, you give a million uh, shillings to a teacher today. Yes. But if you give the other person who is as not qualified... Five times as much. Exactly. Still, this teacher will feel cheated. So the principle should be... Equity. Equity. We start from there and say, okay, if we want to give this person five million, that's fine, no one is going to be grudge, but give this one also so what they deserve. What they deserve. And this is not rocket science, you know. Oh, if a job evaluation works over, yeah. you can go to some of these countries and adopt the same system. Yes. <laughs> it's so not rocket going science. to invent something new. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Mose, would you do you think we could reverse UPE and improve the system instead of giving quality, we focus on quantity instead of giving quantity, we focus on quality. Absolutely. And in fact I will tell you UPE. I will tell you that this country has, the money on, yeah. has been killed by quantity. We, we we seem to be having quantities in everything. Pressure versus conflict. Yes. We have quantities of districts, we have quantities of offices, we have quantities of authorities, we have quantities or even of authorities. Oh, of course. Advisors. advisors. Do we have uh, advisors? We have a big quantity, we have cabinet, a quantity parliament. of cabinet, parliament, and now universities, and even admission. Do you know that actually, Macquarie University, whatever the complaints are today, and whatever the, the uh, you know, the thumbs up are today, but we cannot over um, in, uh, underestimate the effect of what they call the market oriented, which opened the floodgates and you know. Yes, but on that issue, yes. I'd like to differ a little bit. You know, you need to allow everybody to at least be able to read and write, to have access to education. Yes. But you need, let's say, in every county, to have a very good school where you're able to produce very good people coming out of the primary education system or second education system. But today, there are places that don't send people on good programs. Kind of a flagship yes. primary school. How do you do it? In each 
you put them there as model primary school. Put, uh, and and look, at, look, at, look at in Tare Nyakasura, the Toro, is it, was it called Toro College or something? Why should, why yes. should we have of those days. part of the country yeah, with country the best schools and, and, and another part of the country with the no best schools when we actually all are, live under one roof? This is Patrick. I'm already <laughs> on. We'll go for a break. We'll be back. Just stay tuned. Everybody talking like this in the car, this in the bar. Doesn't even matter wherever you are with overload. What you really don't know is right now. You can let them know. Send text to all your loved ones. Send love, I need to know. Send text to all your loved ones. Send love, I need to know. Extra airtime guaranteed every time you load with MTN. Simply dial star 145 high. Get talking all day up to midnight with MTN Overload. MTN. Everywhere you go. John, Mike and I, we go back a bit. We knew John at the beginning, working for someone else. But he was different. He had vision, saw opportunities. He started working towards his goal, opened his own garage, and worked, learning the hard way. His reputation spread. Trust, consistency, quality. Soon people were coming to him from all parts. He made himself and his whole street prosper and also help friends seeing potential in people and helping them on. But John never shouts about all his success. He's just who he is. Special. So here's to men like John who make a difference, who enjoy Nile Special, the rich, satisfying taste from the sauce. Nile Special. You've earned it. Not for sale to persons under 18. Bank of Uganda informs the public that it has issued a 1,000 shillings commemorative coin. This is to celebrate the 50th independence anniversary of the Republic of Uganda. The coin is legal tender effective 9th October 2012. It will be used for day-to-day -day cash transactions. It is round and bears two colors, gold in the center and silver in the outer ring. The front of the coin depicts the crested crane as the main attraction. The back the picks the national coat of arms as the main feature. The coin will reach the public through the banking system and normal cash transactions. There is therefore no arrangement for exchange at Bank of Uganda offices in Kampala or upcountry branches and currency centers. Bank of Uganda is proud of its contribution to Uganda's economic success through prudent monetary policy management over the years. We join the rest of Uganda in celebrating the 50th independence anniversary with the commemorative coin as a lasting reminder of this historic event. Management Bank of Uganda. Spectrum on Radio 1 FM 90. Welcome back on Spectrum tonight. How can the Ugandan education system be reformed to deliver the cadres needed to realize this country's goals of employment creation and development? Our guests tonight, Professor Minashas Bariambrewa, founder and proprietor of the Uganda Technical Technology and uh, you can call it Wutam University, <laughs> also immediate former Vice Chancellor of Macquarie University. Also, Mr. Frederick Mwesije, National Coordinator Forum for Educational NGOs in Uganda, and also a member of the Citizen, Ac Citizen Action for Quality Public Education. You will be able to call in and contribute to this discussion. Professor Barrier, talk to us about this university that you called Utam. What's it about? Utam. You know, we have several universities in this country, but we feel we don't have enough. So <coughs> we want to contribute to the quality of education in this country, and we didn't want to focus on everything. So we decided to focus on technology and management, especially also on the interface between technology and management. So I'll give an example. If you look at the curriculum we have designed for, let's say, ABS in computer science, it's not just computer science. You have 10% of that curriculum, like having business courses, another 10% having soft skills, another 10 percent soft skills in motion yes. how to relate with yeah. people yeah uh, another 10 percent like you take any course you want for that 10 percent so at, at the end of the day this person is not just somebody working with a computer because this person may want to start a business of his own and so on if you look at like the courses we have designed in uh the sbs economics we we have economists in this country but many of them lack that modeling skill 
So you want to have somebody who has done some bit of mathematics, some linear programs, so that you can come up with economic models. You know, you want somebody who can also use technology. So you give this person at least a dose of 10% of ICT and so on. So we are trying to come up with a graduate that is a little bit different from the existing graduates within our country. And more so, we are saying as people who have been in the area of ICT, most of us have been in ICT, we want also bring on board another mode of learning, online learning. I was telling people that the, the University of London started distance education programs in 1854. And today, they have four times the number of students at McKay University, University. And they are running over 100 programs online. And the people are getting these quality degrees. And when it comes to exams, you do the same exams as the students at the University of London. You know? On campus. Yes. So we want to educate the people that actually studying online is not bad. It is okay. It depends on how you do it. You know, even I would tell you, when, if you are talking about studying in the classroom, that it is good or it's bad, it depends on how it is done, who is doing it. Right. So either way, and this is what we are bringing on board. Mr. Fred Mazia, what is it for your university? Well, uh, our regional office is in Twin Towers, and that's where we are going to have most of the students studying from. But we are currently now acquiring campuses of Porova Kampara. Because, oh, different yeah, parts of the capital. Yeah, like we are bringing on board a strategic business school, the leading business school in Europe. So this business school... What did you call it? A strategic business school. Yes. The leading business school in Europe, based in France. They will be running their programs from Kororo. We call them a villa there. Right. We are now finalizing our negotiation with the uh, University of London. And we are going to be bringing on here to Uganda programs from like the uh, School of Economics. LSE. And, yes. Really? And the other, other is, uh, colleges within London. Uh, but those that already have the distance education component, those are the ones we are going to bring to Uganda. Right. And by July next year, Uganda will be taking those programs from here. You study from Uganda, you can do it from Uganda. I know some people have yeah. gone to the University of London, but yeah. the LSE, we don't have many graduates of the LSE. What are the you can have many business schools if you have your child who is doing S6, please encourage him or her to study hard. All he needs or she needs to get two principal passes and they'll pick the best. And the programs are not that expensive. They're not that expensive. And we'll try to give them local support. Local Before I get you back here to support. talk when you're paying for it and talk a little bit more about Utam University because it sounds sweet already. Mr. Fred Moesje, talk to us about uh, some people think we have too many technical institutes. There are too many universities compared to technical institutes. Should we reverse? That? Absolutely. I was going to say that. Uh, when you see a country having more universities than uh, technical institutes, then you cannot be uh, supported surprised at, as, at what we are seeing because universities the professor is here can yeah. uh, guide us yes. are supposed to be grounded in principles in theories in research and so on and so forth while technical institutes should churn out to people who can put hands on their job so vocations technical operators, the people who turn the machines around and that machine was thought about and invented by a professor at the university, yes. by somebody who came from the school of engineering or tech technology and so on and so forth to think of how this machine, how this door uh, sees my iris and opens. That is a job of the other person at the university because he has understood this, the physics, is it what, all of those uh, uh, things. Yes. And then the person from the technical school knows how to make the to that. Yes. Right. Okay. You know, if we have to look at it, maybe in using like geometry, you remember the pyramid. Yes. In universities that, that I suppose they are the top. Absolutely. I was going to talk about the pyramid. Yes. yes. So that in the middle, like you have one graduate, maybe with an engineer, you need ten people ten. from the technical school. Absolutely. All the way down. But we now have in the So now, but absolutely. We have many graduates <laughs> overseeing few. Yeah, most of the people on the roads are coming from Kenya. Even people who are working in the hotels now, good hotels. People who are working in the hotels are, are coming have from Kenya. Because, because we don't have hotel training institutions in yeah, this country. We don't. And when I look at Uganda and serving people in restaurants, you feel like you want to cry. Somebody do. comes holding the plate like this, touching the food. You go to any of these restaurants where Ugandans mm -hmm. are serving, you feel like not eating the food. You know, the way they move, very, very slowly. You ask yourself, how many people will this person serve in a day? 
Well, I mean, I mean, that goes without saying, and I won't even. And let's talk about. <laughs> <laughs> we, we still, uh, we still, we still have a perceived the best education system in the region. Yes, is that, that accurate or is that? It is inaccurate. We do have the issue. We have to address is the numbers and the quality. You see. Like I said, we need to sit down as a country and say how many medical doctors do we need in this country. Once you have grown that, and then you decide on how to train them, you not say, you know, remember when we started increasing this government index? Yes. You would say, okay, now you are taking 1,000, government wakes up to man and says you should take 2,000 government students. But you have not changed anything in terms of facilities. Yes. Now, if you go to the College of Health at Makai University, they are producing very good doctors, but their capacity is limited. So if you ask them to produce 500, move ahead and give them a teaching hospital, improve on the facilities, recruit more staff. So that's the whole thing we are talking about. But I would say, the best. I would say the contrary. Yes, that, that is a historical uh, happening when we a used benefit that we have as a country. When we used to have at least Makerere University, when it was called the Harvard of uh, Sub-Saharan Africa. Yeah, Harvard of Africa, right? absolutely. <coughs> and uh, of course, in the region, many people still hold that picture. Right. But when you look at the statistics, look at the dropout rate. You can't compare what we have in Uganda and what we have, what, what the Kenyans have. For example, you have roughly a million kids in P1. You have just a half, I mean, 400,000 uh, sitting for primary school. Yes. Then you have about 200,000 for senior four. Then you have 100,000 for senior six. Kenya doesn't have those figures. The, the figures in Kenya are much higher than that. They don't drop by half or more than half. Two, when you come to uh, the, uh, uh, the competencies, luckily we have uh, had uh, the benefit as NGOs to look at Uganda, Kenya, and Tanzania. And there was that was a study. Absolutely. And we don't compare. While well, the Kenyans have about like 17% kids falling below the requisite uh, uh, competencies, Uganda has something like 70. Unbelievable. Right. You know? And these figures are there. So to say that Uganda still has uh, the best educational system in the region is only a historical benefit. You need to take patriotism. It also depends on what you're using. <laughs> indicators say do we have the best or the worst if you look at the international schools in this country they are producing very good international schools. yeah the international schools in this country there are some primary schools that are producing good graduates you come to some of the universities some programs you are getting very good people now it depends on who is looking at when you are touching an elephant yes so if you are trying to look at the majority of ugandans definitely are not getting quality education <laughs> yes <laughs> but, yes, but like 10 percent has been produced in this country, it is still the best. <laughs> right. So, yeah. then, the numbers, then, I agree. then we are not talking about the system, the threshold. Because when yeah. you talk about the system as a system, to me, it's supposed to be as equitable yeah. as possible. Right. I should have no at least 90% Ugandans getting there. But when you have just about 10 who are so good, so good that no well, one can provide linear yeah. system. I think the board has been clear. First yes. of all, focus on the numbers <laughs> and then let alone start improving. Work on the quality. quality. Yeah. So if uh, we now start with a good strategy. If, you, if we had followed that philosophy, then we need now to start moving to every district and say, let us have a good secondary school there, a good primary school. And maybe along the way, 10, but 20 years, maybe 50 years. Let's out the 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 let us also tease right. out the numbers. Centenary. The centenary. <laughs> yes. Then you say, now Uganda has all good schools at primary level, secondary school level, high school, and so on. Edmund, but sorry, that we can as well tease out the, the question of the numbers. Are we really qualified to say that we have the numbers, bad or whatever they UP, are? many of them are. How many kids do we have in UP? UP? Millions are at the moment. We have 70 million officially reported, yes. but the reports have come out. The, the, the Commission of Inquiry and UPE has said that they are ghost pupils. So the 70 million, we are not sure. At least the report says right. not all of them are there. Yes. And how many people are we? 
in Uganda. Can we say that mm. only 7 million, even if we took them as 7 without uh, any inflation and, and so on? Right. Are these, uh, that's the number which should be in our primary schools? But I would say that day okay. was not focused on establishing many of the numbers because some of these students don't come to school for almost a week. They are there. They're hungry and they're they they working they the like once a week or twice a week. So the time you come to count, they are not at the same. I will not school. argue against the that. teachers do the same. I will, I will still assume the seven right. million. Okay. Mm -hmm. Professor, but before we get to hear from the <laughs> listeners, okay. how do we restructure our, I mean, you gave it very graphically, the lack of skills, because we don't have enough technical list. How do we do it? Big push style. But you see, in, in the whole world, and studies that have been done, you cannot develop as a country unless you are focused on health services, you focused on education, you also focused on job creation or employment. People must be employed. So, as a country now, we have to decide on how do we want to move forward. Now, in the area of education, you cannot start with everything. Yeah. But there are sectors that are critical. We have a lot of youth unemployment, and it's getting worse day by day. So, we need to have them absorbed in certain sectors. Now, we may have graduates who have not passed with good grades in primary schools, secondary schools, but you can take them to these other vocational institutes, like to be carpenters, to be welders, to what? They read very well. Yes. And so many of those are needed. If you look at our economy now, it is many of those. So the government should come up with these institutions. Uh, recently I was happy when I heard about skilling Uganda. Skilling Uganda, yes. But when I read the report, we were talking about to strengthening about eight or so institutions. Yeah. But it's not It's not nationwide. Yes. You need some. How should you allow that skilling Uganda? Because it sounded exciting. We need money. We need money. To what extent? Start prioritizing money. Uh, to what extent? This is the other element that we are having. You know, when you hear budgets like for education sector, you say it is it has been given a lot of money. But you see, you have to look at uh, what is under that sector. Absolutely. We have some ministries that are very small, but because you're saying a ministry of this is getting a lot of money, you may think that education is getting a lot of money. It's not. No, it is not. It's not. If you look at some of these units we call authorities, what, what, you know, they have other budgets right. alongside the ministry. Yes. So I, I think we need to look at the education sector and give it the money that it deserves. And also, by the way, the university, ha the university have to be looked into. The professor at the university now is earning 3.5 million shillings gross. Yes. That is very little. And do you know what happens? Those ones train people who are going to teach at the lower level. Then those ones have trained train people at another level and so on all the way down. So if they are not doing a good job at university level, you expect that one to go down in terms of the teacher education. I remember so, you, you told me some time back in an interview, you said that you wanted, the, by the time you leave Makere, you wanted mm -hmm. a lecturer to be earning about 20 million shillings. That yes, was that was my, <laughs> my wish, but you know, I, I, you know, we, we, like, like I said, we don't know. We do not know what the future holds, but no one holds the future. I had plans, but God had other plans for me. So let's see. I just to prefer that one. <laughs> Could it be right? right? Let's see. From I hope Dumba will realize that. Let's hear from the listeners. This is Spectrum on Radio. And tonight, how can the Ghana education system be reformed to deliver the cutters needed to realize the country's goals of employment creation and development? Our number is 0414 Spectrum, hello. Yes, sir. Good evening. Good evening, your name? Thanks for the academics in the studio. Mukasa Jim is the name. Yes, Jimmy. I was privileged in the 70s to go to kindergarten for one year, seven years in primary, and uh, two years at uh, high school. Uh, the hiccup, but uh, at least everything was provided. Now, my question is very simple, and I wouldn't want you to sit me off because you don't like my voice. One, what can one million dollars do to help kindergarten growing kids in all of Uganda? Two, if uh, the gentleman who was a former chancellor, vice chancellor, Makere, can be honest, what does he think? that he took from Makere could have helped to better other courses that are relevant to Uganda young people who now some of us look after. Good evening. Spectrum, hello. Hello. hello good, evening, yes, good evening, your name? My name is Peter Wamboka, Nigeria. Yes, Peter. I would like to, first of all, thank Edmond for bringing the two heads which are giving brilliant ideas to the nation. And I want to 
congratulate Professor Baria for starting the uh, Utamu. It's a very interesting name, very captivating. Sweetness University. Well thought out. Uh, Edmond, the issue of education and, and training, I want to understand whether our city is providing education or it is providing learning and training. Uh, because they are really different things. And if, if it is designed so, then it should be so. If it is not, then I, I think there were enough recommendations, including the late um, uh, the late professor who, who wrote a white set on education, yes. not in UPE. Right. I think it should have begun in with quality of learning and training. So that you, uh, I agree with the professor that if, if the primary products are not good, that is a secondary level, at a tertiary level, they cannot be any better because this is the foundation. So, so focus and attention and prioritization should have been there in terms of quality from the word go. All right. <coughs> Svetra, hello. Yes, hello. Yes, your name? Good evening, Mr. Kutitmo. Good evening, my friend. Your name? Uh, this is Mansoul. Actually, I had a specific gentleman saying that drivers are, are, are not as uh, good as teachers, but even drivers, is, we have a profession driver that have to in the university, so drivers should also be respected and they, actually we deserve, because we, we are practical, we are not theoretical as the other people. Thank you very much. Very powerful contribution. Special hello. Yes, Max. If you are to invoke a slogan, what you are designed by the Arabs, that a hungry teacher might as well be a hungry education. The other problem there, the other key important issue we need to observe is that the world has moved away from this issue of training people to study subject after subject after subject. People are focusing on training students for professional certificate. Now, you go and ask an ordinary reaper in secondary education that this you are training to be an ordinary reading certificate holder. What is this certificate specialized in? Spectra Mala, a final call. Yes. I'm, I'm glad you, you, you have Professor Barry Bayam River on. Yes, ma'am. Oh, Jack and Yagahima, I'm calling from Narnia. I, I was wondering if how he can comment on how he can actually use the, me the, the method he's working at his, this, this uh, project that he has, this institution that he's put up, where he's looking at online distance learning. And, I, and I, I know that with that you can have very good content, like he says, and you will have you can have really very highly skilled professors or lecturers who are supporting that, and yet many students will have access to that kind of learning. And bring it back to the point where he talked about primary the primary schools, where content and quality of stuff of stuff has, has gone down or declined. And I, I was asking again recognizing that we now have good connectivity for the internet and again using the Rwandan model of one computer per child where they put these computers that are very laptops that are very cheap and each primary student can get it. Okay. How can we combine all that so that using what he's talking about, we use that methodology that he has, he's applying with his own like distance learning to apply to primary schools. Okay. And then where he has suggested that you have a one model secondary, secondary school or primary school in a district, those would probably be further resources to this kind of model. Okay. I'd like to, to get his feedback on that, that feasibility in Uganda and how soon it can be. All right. Jacqueline, thank you. Let's hear from the Don's Professor Barrier. One final call. All right, let's get you. Yes, Peter. I was uh, I'm a technician oh. and I had access to see what happens with work with some technicians and know what's going on in other countries. I want another course who was uh, an engineer with a uh, uh, two-year master's degree in survey. And he's a German here in Uganda. We work together. He never allowed me to work. He just, I was just following him. He, uh, he does, he did all the work. And I see that very different from the way our engineers here are trained. They're not trained to actually come on the ground. They're not trained to stay there. And, and I think we have this, I can see actually that those 
Okay. All right. Okay. Peter. Peter, thank you. Okay. 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 Peter, thank you very much indeed. Mr. Mwesija, let's hear you out on this. Uh, right. <coughs> one, uh, Jimmy asked uh, what can one million for kindergarten people? For kindergarten. Actually, for kindergarten, the government of Uganda has ob absorbed itself from it. It is in the hands of the private sector. So, government only plays an overseeing and regulatory role. All right. Uh, Suddenly, if it is one million, that will be very little money. One million dollars. Yeah, it, it wouldn't do anything okay. in this country, given that we are talking about uh, millions of kids. All right. Uh, the question from Jimmy was, what could have been better at MOOC? I think uh, Professor Barrier that was to him uh, directly. And uh, Peter uh, Wamboga Mugiria is a system providing education or learning and training. Um, I think this is a, a, a longer question that should have been a learning and training other than just going through a routine, yes. a retinue of things, uh, do the exam, score what you can, and go through and go away. And that's what, what is happening. We are just go, going through like uh, water go, or a mature goes through a glass. Right. It doesn't leave a stress, <coughs> does not uh, get changed at all, then neither does the glass change. All right. um, the person, Mansura, the drivers should be appreciated. No, we are not uh, demeaning them. No one has demeaned them because every profession, uh, if I may borrow from the Baganda, they say, There is no bad profession, no bad work except theft. So no one is saying that is bad. But, but uh, it would be unfair if I read the message. I'm a, I'm a student of political science. Yeah. If I said uh, okay. I should earn more than, say, a professor in medicine or a okay. professor in IT, like a professor right. Baria. Okay. So it's equity. All right. Professor, let's hear from you uh, in the last yes. two minutes. So uh, I would just be very brief because most of the, what they said was just comments. What could have been done better to Makere? Makere always, it builds for the future. So it is all about continuous improvement. When I came in, we had so many programs we were talking about that were duplicated. We phased out many of them, restructured the curriculum. But like I said, if you have a good curriculum, you also need the inputs into that curriculum. Good teachers, good teaching materials. Last week you had chemistry students who were trying to write it. Because the money is not enough. That institution is having so many programs which you can't phase out because it started off as a national university. Now we are there with all these programs. You can't just phase everything out. So to me, you know, McKinney University builds for the future and will continue to improve. And I'm sure Professor Domba is going to improve further. When it comes to the issue of the driver, I'm glad he mentioned. You know, there's what you call is it, you call it overemployment? Yes. To find a PhD holder who is working as a driver. Absolutely. So what we are saying is that are, there has to be a level. This is secondary school education plus some training in the driving. And that's yeah. your salary scale. If you come and work as a driver when you have a degree, that's your business. Look for another job. <laughs> now the issue of e-learning at primary school level, this is a good thing. You know, most of our students are on, on internet, Twitter, Facebook, trying to chat. If you go to Canada, they have online tutoring, but you cannot have a child at that level only you uh, like uh, learn through online learning. So we have to have a lot of face to face, but this can be complementary. Now the issue of a study model to do with primary schools, sec one primary school, one secondary school, in each district of the model school, you need to look at the health system. The government has put up health center four, health center three, it's calling them model. But most people are saying these are just buildings. 
they don't see medical doctors, they don't see nurses, so even that they don't see the medicine, the which are change. critical. So we need to look at this concept, first of all, what you call a model health center, a model primary school, a model secondary school. Right. And I think the government is planning for this. Okay. They are putting a lot of money, but they need to focus in this model primary school, secondary school, they should focus on the teachers right. and the teaching materials. Well, to go. Thank you very much, Nida. Yeah, yes. Professor Benashes Bariamrema, founder and proprietor of the Wutam University. That is the Uganda Technology and Management University. He's a former, immediate former vice chancellor of Korea University. Thank you for coming to Spectrum tonight. Mr. Frederick Mwesje, National Coordinator, Forum for Education and NGOs in Uganda, also a member of the Citizen Action for Quality Public Education. Thank you for tuning in. I've been your host, Ed Monchis, to Spectrum. We'll be back tomorrow. Up next is the news in English. At Tusker, our expert blows believe in taking the time to get the